Hey friend, today we're going to be talking about the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT exam. In this section, they're testing your ability to understand and interpret and deal with numbers. So that's statistical data and data presented in charts, tables and graphs. In order to do well in this section, you do not have to have a high level of maths. You really only need the level of maths that most 15, 16 year olds have. You just need to be able to understand the questions and apply that maths. I think it's fairly obvious why all medical practitioners need a good level of maths. You're very often prescribing medications, you might be prescribing a certain medication which has a particular dose per kilogram, in which case you need to be able to understand how much medication to give to a patient. You might be required to understand how common a disease is in a particular population so that you can weigh up the probabilities of whether it's one illness or another illness that your patient is suffering from. What kind of things can I ask you to do in the quantitative reasoning section? The four most common calculations you're going to be asked to do in a question are percentages, fractions and decimals, working out averages, so mean, median and mode, some very simple mechanics, so dealing with speed for example, and then ratios and proportionalities. Even if you are already amazing at maths, maybe you're a maths protege, you're doing further maths at A-level or something like that, you still can improve. And if you do these three things, everyone is gonna be able to improve the score on the quantitative reasoning section. The first thing I would say in every single question you come across in this section is to approximate everything. This is a multiple choice exam. And very often you only need to get close to one of the answers to know it's that answer. So that means if your calculator comes up with 39.96, for the next bit of the calculation, just use 40. It doesn't matter. It's okay to drop a decimal point here and there as long as you're saving time because very often the questions will be a little bit forgiving of those rounding errors. Plus, approximating is so much faster than doing the actual calculation. So if you can come up with an approximation and then you do the actual calculation, it's a really good way of checking that you haven't you know, pressed the wrong button on a calculator or something like that. As long as your actual answer is close to your approximation, you can be pretty sure you've got the right thing. You want to use the calculator the smallest possible amount. Do as much as you can in your head. And that means between now and your UCAT exam, you're going to have to practice your mental arithmetic. There is an on-screen calculator in the UCAT exam. It looks just like this, but it's very clunky. It isn't a very clever calculator. It can't do a lot of the advanced functions that you might be used to on a scientific calculator. It can really only add, subtract, multiply and divide. And it is useful for a number that can't really be done with mental arithmetic. However, it is so easy to either press the wrong button on the calculator or to not press a button on the calculator and it throws off your whole calculation. So if you can do it in your head as much as possible, you're gonna save time and actually be more accurate. The last strategy for in the exam and doing really well in this section is to use that whiteboard that you're given as much as possible. It's so much easier to tally things up by just doing quick dashes on the board, to do a calculation in the part one of the question and then keep that number written down for part two or to draw your own little diagram to help you figure out what's happening in a graph. Just to quickly summarize then, I recommend you approximate everything. I recommend you use the calculator the smallest amount possible, and I recommend you use that whiteboard as much as possible. So here's an example of one of the really common question types. This is where you're given data in a table and asked to interpret that data somehow. We can see here that to answer this question, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to understand the difference between two items, so there being able to calculate that 0.6 is the difference between 10.3 and 9.7. You also then need to be able to just do some very simple multiplications. You may well also come across graph questions in this section, and here's an example. You can see here that using a graph, the question tests a candidate's ability to work out an average. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful. Check out any of the videos on screen right now to see a breakdown of the other sections of the UCAT exam. For anyone who's sitting the UCAT exam this year, massive good luck. If you have any questions about the UCAT exam, please feel free to leave a comment on any one of my UCAT videos and I will get back to you.